the magic spell of the Grand National once again lay over Aintree. Brisk betting soon changed the look of the overnight callover, and Nicholas Silva lost ground in the punter's favour. In general, whatever they do, say or think, doesn't much interfere with the flow of money into the satchels of the layers. 32 horses were left in the race, and as the clock moved on towards 3.15, excitement mounted in the paddock and all over the course. Merriman the second's price went out to 20s. Up on Blonde Warrior was Terry Biddlecombe. Taxidermist, Mr. John Lawrence up. Josh Gifford, Syracuse. Merriman the second won in 1960. Meanwhile, the uncrowned queen of Aintree, Mrs. Mirabel Topham, watched with Field Marshal Harding and the Spanish ambassador. Last year's winner, Nicholas Silva, and the veteran, Mr. Watt. There were so many famous riders and horses about to take their place at the start. And all 32 come under starter's orders. They seem to be much cooler than any other living thing at Aintree. Certainly, they give no trouble to Mr. Alec Marsh. As to a perfect start, he gets them away. They're off with 550 yards to go to the first fence, where it's always an advantage to be amongst the leaders. First over is F. Shortsmount, Friedrich's son. To everyone's relief, there's no crop of falls this year. The only casualty is Springbok, a tragic disappointment to his numerous backers. Friedrich's son held his lead over the second jump, going great guns, with Duplicator, Clear Prophet and Chavara in more or less close attendance. Jump number four, Friedrich's son out of sight in this scene. Nothing for the rest of the field to be alarmed about. No Grand National is ever decided at this stage. Over the fifth jump, they're still chasing Friedrich's son as they pound on towards Aintree's most dreaded hazard, Beaches Brook. Beaches, four foot ten high and a big drop on the other side. And on the way to the next jump, they're still chasing Friedrich's son. After the leader and duplicator comes Chavara, Michael Scudamore in the saddle. Canal turn, no change in the leadership. The danger here is the sharp turn left after landing. Pathy's travelling camera almost gives a jockey's eye view at Valentine's Brook. Friedrich's son and duplicator still loftily disdaining the ones behind. Duplicator takes over the lead at the next fence and is still there as they approach jump number 14. It's still Duplicator from Friedrich's son and not far behind is Dandy Tim with a large bunch of hopefuls after them. At the water jump, Duplicator and Peter's son are neck and neck, Dandy Tim just behind. But he unseats his rider. All the rest are safely over. The water was the 16th and last jump of the circuit. Now they go round for the second time. Friedrich's son and Duplicator still lead the field. It's a tremendous feat for any horse to get runs around the national course. And now the indomitable pair are on this second circuit with many of the original field in pursuit. Now Duplicator's gallant race is run. He falls at the 19th, bringing the favorite Frenchman's Cove down with him. The 21st fence is nearly fatal to Frieda's son. Only the superb horsemanship of Jockey Short kept him in the saddle.
second time over beaches. In fourth place, the grey Nicola Silva, going well for a horse not too fond of soft ground. Friedrich Sun takes the canal turn rather badly. Evidently, he's beginning to tire. Gay Navarri moves to second place. Embarrassing the two leaders is General Nuisance, the invisible man up. Gay Navarri and Friedrich Sun still dispute the lead as they reach jump 26. Clearly, Gay Navarri is now the stronger of the two. In hot pursuit of Gay Navarri now is Kilmore with Mr. Watt, Weinborough and the tired Friedrich Sun close behind. The 30th and last fence. Dramatically, Fred Winter brings Kilmore to the front and ahead of Mr. Watt, Kilmore is first over. Gay Navarri and Weinborough land safely too. Between them and the winning post, there's now only the run-in of 484 yards, though that must seem like miles. Nothing can overtake Kilmore, dramatic winner of the Grand National. Weinborough second, Mr. Watt third, and the well-liked Nicholas Silver seventh. At 28 to 1, Kilmore was steered to victory by that great jockey, Fred Winter. A Grand National to be long remembered.